Well, good afternoon. This is Truth Triumphant Radio. We are currently in a mini-series that I believe will have seven, maybe eight parts uh, called, Is There Not a Cause? So we will continue that in this talk today. The uh, subtitle of this talk is Seventh-day Adventist ministers will urge Sunday keeping. Before we begin, let us pray. Dear Father in heaven, we pray for the Holy Spirit to be our leader and our guide as we share together just now. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. <coughs> Sounds far-fetched, huh? Seventh-day Adventist ministers urging Seventh-day Adventists to keep the first day of the week. Have you lost your mind, Bill? Are you crazy? Well, friends... I want you to think back to a few years ago when COVID-19 was ravaging this world. Do you remember how the majority of Seventh-day Adventists responded to COVID-19 and the restrictions that were imposed by the government? Do you remember, friends, how Mark Finley and Ted Wilson and the Seventh-day Adventist denomination responded to Seventh-day Adventists who wanted to preserve their religious uh, and health convictions? Do you remember how the denomination responded to those Seventh-day Adventists that wanted to maintain their conscientious convictions? Well, if you don't remember, friend, I'll refresh your memory. The Seventh-day Adventist denomination shunned them. The Seventh-day Adventist denomination pushed, urged Seventh-day Adventists to follow all government protocols, uh, regardless of their conscientious convictions. I still have a, there's a video on the YouTube uh, talking about some of those restrictions where Mark Finley told Seventh-day Adventists that they should uh, follow whatever the government says uh, out of love for their neighbor. So, friends, what did the denomination do in that religious, civil and religious crisis? When civil and religious liberties were being dumped, what was the denomination's response? Friend, it was extremely um, educative. The denomination went hook, line, and sinker in embracing and urging Seventh-day Adventists to follow all government protocols. I remember many people uh, calling, emailing uh, us at the ministry and at our website requesting for a exemption letter so that they could maintain their conscientious convictions in regard to their health and we asked them, we said, well, why are you asking us? Why don't you ask your local church? These were Seventh-day Adventists across America. And we said, "Call, ask your pastor, ask your local conference to write you a letter. And they said, we have. And they will not, they will not help us. 
So friends, in the next religious, civil or religious crisis that we know is coming, we know there's going to be another crisis coming, how do you think the denomination will respond next time? Friends, if we don't understand it, let me make it clear. COVID-19 was a dress rehearsal for the next time. And the next time could very well and most likely will be Sunday. So the denomination did exactly as they were told exactly as the Jes Jesuit-trained politicians, be it Gavin Newsom, be it uh, Andrew Como, be it uh, the sci scientific uh, Jesuit educators, Anthony Fauci, the man at the CDC, all of these people, friend, they were parroting the Jesuit agenda for America and for the world. And the denomination embraced it wholeheartedly. And friends, make no mistake, they will embrace it the next time as well. Well, today... In this part six of Is There Not a Cause? Ministers urging, Adventist ministers urging Sunday keeping. I want to read a statement to you that will be the springboard for this talk today. We read in the Review and Herald, March 18, 1884. Now, a little background of this statement. This is the Review and Herald, March 18, 1884. The title of the uh, article by Ellen White is A Sabbath Reform Needed. A Sabbath Reform Needed. And in the prior paragraphs, Ellen White talks about how the Jews had disregarded the Sabbath in the days of Nehemiah and how Nehemiah had stood firm for the right and for the Sabbath. And then in a paragraph right close to the one we're going to be reading, Ellen White says, We need Nehemiahs in 1884 who shall arouse the people to see how far they are from God through their transgressions. Uh, she goes on to say, uh, the Sabbath of Jehovah is being trampled under unholy feet. Um, there is need of a Sabbath reform among us who profess to observe God's holy rest day. Some discuss their business matters and lay plans on the Sabbath. And God looks upon this in the same light as though they engaged in the actual transaction of business. So friend, it's very clear that the context for this statement, Ellen White is urging Seventh-day Adventists to strongly consider how they're keeping the seventh day Sabbath. Now, the reason that I mention this is because a number of years ago out in Loma Linda, giving a talk out there, and I quoted this statement that I'm soon to read, and a man came up to me after the meeting and he said, oh, that passage is not talking about Seventh-day Adventists. That's talking about the worldly churches. And I looked at him and I said, Sir, you need to go read the article because it clearly is talking about Seventh-day Adventism. Well, here is the paragraph, friends. And as we go through it, we will make comments. 
The Lord has a controversy with his professed people in these last days. In this controversy, men in responsible positions will take a course directly opposite to that pursued by Nehemiah. So, friends, she's talking here about Seventh-day Adventists, and she says that men in responsible positions will do the exact opposite as Nehemiah. So, in a time of crisis, in a time of trouble, she says that men in responsible positions will do exactly the opposite of Nehemiah. And friend, again, that's exactly what we saw during COVID. Exactly. They will not only ignore and despise the Sabbath themselves, but they will try to keep it from others by burying it beneath the rubbish of custom and tradition. So Seventh-day Adventist leaders, friend, in a time of crisis, because clearly in a time of peace, people are not going to relinquish their convictions. But in a time of crisis, when character is revealed, you know, we, we often say that character in a time of crisis we're going to change our characters. Well, it doesn't happen that way, friends. A crisis doesn't change our characters. It reveals character. Ellen White goes on, they will not only ignore and despise the Sabbath themselves, but they will try to keep it from others by burying it beneath the rubbish of custom and tradition. Think back, friend, and I, I can't get out of my mind the, the, the statements that I heard Mark Finley giving as to why Seventh-day Adventists were to give up their convictions, religious convictions, civil convictions, health convictions during COVID in order to comply with government mandates. So much so, friends, that today I can't listen. I cannot listen to that guy talk on any subject of importance. And then Ellen White says, in churches and in large gatherings in the open air, ministers will urge upon the people the necessity of keeping the first day of the week. Did you hear that, friends? And again, the context, she's talking to Seventh-day Adventists. And she says in churches. Well, what churches is she talking about? She's talking about Seventh-day Adventist churches. So in Seventh-day Adventist churches and in large gatherings in the open air. Now, what are large gatherings in the open air? Well, clearly, friend, those are camp meetings. So Ellen White says that in Seventh-day Adventist churches and at camp meetings, Seventh-day Adventist ministers will urge Seventh-day Adventists to keep the first day of the week. That it's absolutely necessary, it's a necessity, and they will urge it upon Seventh-day Adventists. Now, friends... 
You know, I, I harp back to this because I want you to think about this statement right here. So in Seventh-day Adventist churches, Seventh-day Adventists will be told, well, you got to go to church on Sunday. And you say, that's impossible. That could not happen. Friends, that's what the prophet says. That's what the prophet says, friends. And they will urge Seventh-day Adventists to keep the first day of the week. But friend, I thought, I thought the church is going through. You know, that's what Doug Batchelor will tell us. That's what Ted Wilson will tell us. That's what Walter Veith will tell us. That's what 3ABN will tell us. You know, be in the church. You got to be in the church. Well, what benefit is there, friend? <laughs> what is the point? You're in an Adventist church. You're going every Sabbath to an Adventist church. And you're paying your funds. And someday, the pastor who you've been supporting for decades with your money... He's been capitulating all along, and he's going to get up in an Adventist pulpit on a Sabbath morning, and he's going to tell you, you've got to start keeping Sunday. So clearly those Adventist churches across the land that we've been told are going through to the kingdom, and you're safe being there, those Adventist churches are going to become hell holes where you're going to hear Adventist ministers telling you to accept the mark of the beast. Now, are those churches, friend, going through? They're going through to the lake of fire. That's where they're going to. But I, I thought, you know, I've been told you got to be in the church. That that's God wants you in the church and the church is going through and the sinners are going to be sifted out. They're going to leave the church. Well wait a minute friends. Our modern rendition <laughs> and our modern misquoting of Ellen White it's not the sinners that leave, friends. The apostasy remains in the denomination. You remember the statement in Great Controversy 608. Adventists stay in their churches, but while doing that, they've joined up with the opposition. So those churches, friend, have become hotbeds of iniquity and apostasy. And when a Sunday law comes, the denominational churches are going to embrace Sunday worship. That's what the prophet says. Now, does that mean all Adventists are going to do that? No, they're not. Of course not. As... The Lord said to Elijah, Yet I have 7,000 that have not bowed the knee to Baal, nor have kissed him. So are there faithful Seventh-day Adventists? They're very silent, friends. They're not standing for a whole lot today. But there are faithful Seventh-day Adventists that will stand. So friends, what is this idea, where does this idea come from that the people, the bad guys, 
the the self-supporting ministries like myself we're the bad guys i as a gentleman in germany told me a number of years ago at a meeting he said he said when when are you going to stop doing the devil's work and i i looked at him and i said excuse me uh, can you explain that to me how am I doing the devil's work by promoting the three angels' messages throughout the world? And he said, well, you're not in the church. So, friend, how is it, how is it that, that the church has become everything to Seventh-day Adventists today? You know, this letter that I got recently that we got from Walter Weith, Walter's solution for us and the work we're doing was come back to the church. Why? For what reason, friend? You tell me a good reason so I can support Gwenoon Diop as he goes around the world, so I can help Seventh-day Adventists to set up the image of the beast, in the denomination, because that's what the statement says, friends. Right here in Review and Herald, March 18, 1884, Seventh-day Adventist ministers will urge Seventh-day Adventists of the necessity of keeping the first day of the week. The necessity of, of accepting the mark of the beast? the necessity of embracing a an idea that will take me to hell that will bring me to suffer the plagues and to be lost and to be destroyed at the coming of Christ adventist ministers will tell seventh day adventists to do that that's right friends and they're not going to be telling Seventh-day Adventists that from outside the denomination. It, it doesn't say that, friend, does it? It says they'll be doing it in Seventh-day Adventist churches. Now, friend, there, there's something weird about that, but let, let's put this thought together with what we learned from a previous statement of Ellen White's. In volume one of Selected Messages, page 204 and 205, when she says storm and tempest will sweep away the structure. Well, friends, if and when this statement from the Review and Herald, March 18, 1884, when this happens, that Seventh-day Adventists will urge, will be urged to keep the first day of the week in Adventist churches and in camp meetings. Well, what will be the purpose, what will be the point of Sabbath-keeping churches to to be open any longer well those sabbath keeping churches will have to completely change their marquee because now they're sunday keeping churches and all of these pastors in these adventist churches are they now still god's people and are they still now going through to the kingdom of God? Like we're being told today, friends? Friends, open your eyes. There is no safety in a church. There is safety in in Jesus Christ there is safety in the truth of the three angels messages 
there is your safety. There is no safety in the denominational church. Because when the denominational churches espouse Sunday worship, the marquees will change and the structure that, that you're trusting in and you're being told to trust in today, friends, storm and tempest will sweep the structure away. Now, friends, I know this is hard to grasp some of this. When you are being lied to on a weekly basis, by the leadership of Seventh-day Adventists. You're being told that the bad guys are the people that are outside the denomination. That couldn't be further from the truth. You're being told that the safety net and where you need to be and where you need to put your money is in an Adventist church. You're being lied to, friends. Lied to. Because you're supporting this ecumenical movement that will end in Sunday worship among Seventh-day Adventists. This picture, friend, that Ellen White paints is far, far different than the misquotes, the misapplication. Well, let's take that quote for a minute. The church may appear is about to fall, but it does not fall while the sinners in Zion are shaken out. Well, friend, what is the church that goes through, that doesn't fall? What is it that doesn't fall, friends? Now, think about that for a minute. If these denominational pastors and leaders urge Seventh-day Adventists to keep Sunday, and to threaten to shut down your church if you don't do it because they own the title on your building. Friends, does Sunday keeping Adventist churches, do they go through? Is that what Ellen White's talking about when she says the church may appear as about to fall, but it doesn't fall? Friends, Ellen White is so clear that the church that goes through, as it has in every era of history, at the time of the fall of Jerusalem in the days of Nebuchadnezzar, in the time of the first century Jewish church and the fall of the sanctuary, at that time, what went through, friends? It was the faithful few that went through. It was Daniel and his friends. It was Ezekiel and his associates during the fall in the 6th century. That's what went through, friends. The S Solomon's Temple the organizational structure in Jerusalem was destroyed, friends. It was destroyed. In the first century, what went through, friends? What went through? It was the faithful apostles and followers of Jesus Christ. They went through, friends, and carried the message to every nation, kindred, tongue, and people. That's what went through, friends. 
Did the organizational structure of the Jewish church go through, friends? Well, in 70 AD, the opulent temple in Jerusalem was burned to the ground. Friends, it didn't go through. And those in apostasy were destroyed. And that's what will happen again. The denomination today is hell-bent, is hell-bent on encouraging people to stay in the denomination and to support the apostasy. It's hell-bent on that, friends. All the leaders, Ted Wilson, Mark Finley, 3ABN, Doug Batchelor, Walter Weiss, Ivor Myers, all the rest of those guys. That's what it's about for them, friends. But Ellen White says, storm and tempest will sweep away the structure. She goes on and says, there are calamities on sea and land. These calamities will increase one disaster following close upon another. And the little band of conscientious Sabbath keepers will be pointed out as the ones who are bringing the wrath of God upon the world by their disregard of Sunday. You know, friends, we hear among Seventh-day Adventism today, oh, we're 22 million strong. What a powerful denomination we have. And we're all going through to the kingdom. Just stay in the church. Is that what Ellen White said here, friends? She said, the little band of conscientious Sabbath keepers will be pointed out as the ones who are bringing the wrath of God by their disregard of Sunday. The little band... Now, friends, I don't know how many people are represented by a little band. I just know that a little band isn't 20 to 25 million people that are being lied to, that somehow they're safe in the denomination because that's going through. Friends, you need to look again. The church that goes through are the faithful little bands scattered hither and thither and yon that remain with Christ and his truth. That's the little band. Those are the ones, those are the church, the sinners in Zion that are sifted out those are those who've given up the, the truths that make us the people we are. The sinners are the ones that have joined up with the opposition. Oh, friends, may we stand for what is true and right today. Not being concerned about the denomination because friend according to Ellen White it will be blown away let us pray dear father in heaven thank you for the light of the spirit of prophecy that still shines as a light in a dark place and oh, how your people today have become so blinded to the truths of end-time Bible prophecy, just as your people were blinded in the first century. Oh Lord, cause light to shine among your professed people before it's too late. 
and before they are urged to keep the first day of the week. Bless your people to make good decisions, to make eternally right decisions. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.